It's a very special Fresh Bottle Friday today because we've got two bottles to pop and we're helping you get that payday purchase in line. And this will be a payday purchase for sure. Yeah, these ones are a little on the pricey side, so we're going to see if they were worth the money or if we got hosed, I guess. But we'll see. We've got the Calumet 14 and the Calumet 15. Pop 14. Popping 15. They're from batches of like 19 barrels. I tell you like the rack number that they came off of and everything. Ours may be a little different than yours. Might be exactly the same. Could yeah. all just be a gimmick. Who knows? They're pretty cool looking bottles though. I like the old school photography. It kind of reminds me of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. You know, the loadout screen. I purchased the 14 back in 2020. Barreled in March 2006. The 15 you just purchased this year. I imagine that would also mean it was barreled in 2006. You also paid less for the 15 than I did for the 14 because you were at like a Total Wine and it was cheap. It was on sale, I think, or something. I saw it and I immediately was like, oh yes, here we go. Let's jump on that 14 nose. That's right. Literally though, I was asking, not saying. It was. Yes, the, the, the orientation of the of bottles course. on the table. Naturally. Ooh. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, chocolate covered cherries right off the bat for sure. Heavy on the cherry. And I think it pairs well with that like bitter oakiness. Almost perhaps Russell's Reserve like vibes that I'm getting off. I was jumping more to the EEH Taylor single barrel we have. Which also is great and fantastic. So it's reminding me of that. A little bit of a tart cherry with some chocolate. Some caramel like all bourbons will have. Somewhat of a dry feel on the nose. I'm liking what I'm smelling thus far. Yeah. I think we should just jump in and taste it right away since we've got her nosed up. Yeah, I suppose. <coughs> cherry bomb. You're going cherry bomb? Yeah. A cherry encased in dark chocolate. Those like Christmas time German booze cherry chocolate yeah. guys. With a strange almost like Tootsie Roll aftertaste. I can see that, and it there you get a hit of the oak as it's going down. I could give you a lingering Tootsie Roll. The bottle fly, uh, uh, that's old. It's got like a staying power. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still feeling the Tootsie Roll situation here. Going back in on the nose, sweetness has shown up even more after tasting it. A little spiky when you swallow it. Get that spiky oak. That last sip dried out my tongue after a little bit too. Interesting. Slow proof, I think. 48.1% alcohol by volume, so that's 96.2 proof. So. Below 100, which is strange that you're feeling that spikiness, but I got it too. It well, it's, not a, a it's not a proof spikiness, it's oak. I thought it would be a little bit smoother being 14 years old, but it has a little punch that comes with it, and I kind of respect that. I'm going to swish and then move over to the 15. I should probably do the same as well because there is still a lingering Tootsie Roll aspect. Now, the 15 is 105 proof, so... A little bit of a bump up and a year older. This one, much more caramel. This one, caramel. Caramel. <laughs> <laughs> much more caramel on the nose. But I'm not really getting that cherry. No, this is more like there's some caramel, but I think this one is going to be that Tootsie Roll bomb here. I'm getting a little bit of chocolate, but it's very, very smooth. We aren't getting kind of that bite like the 14 had. No, there's not that tangy cherry. Caramel note that was like present in the 14 is what is dominant in the 15 i think yeah it's, i agree with that statement for yeah. sure all right let's dive in it's almost weirdly like more of a flyover flavor right in the 14. yeah i was gonna say it it almost feels like a thinner mouth feel and that staying power is not there it's a bit buttery yeah i'll give it that some caramel. Like a but, yeah, buttery caramel. There's not that spikiness you mentioned on the 14 either. Like, this is smooth sipping. What you feel in this one is the additional proof. You, you're not feeling that oak spikiness. This is a proof burn that you're getting on it. Almost a creamy finish, too, though. Drinking it more. Like cream soda, actually. The lingering thing that's going on on the back of my tongue is cream soda. The smoothness, like the mouthfeel, almost everything. It's weird. Or those like root beer barrel candies. The way those had that like kind of acidic thing. It's strange that a year being in a barrel longer would take this from like Tootsie Roll, like a bit of a hard hit and punch Chocolate. to like very smooth, almost like a cream soda. But there's that little twang in there that like root beer will have, you know, just that little bit, like it's not harsh. 
it's just like that little, like those root beer barrel candies. There's almost like this weird tanginess to them, you know, for lack of a better word. They have a very distinct taste, and I'm getting that similar kind of feeling here. Those two varieties of soda are kind of they go grouped hand, together. Yeah, they go hand in hand. So I understand where you're coming from, and I think it's basically the way our palates are aligned where you're getting maybe a little bit extra spice or something, but I'm getting a little bit more creaminess or smoothness. I just jump back to the 14. That fruit really shines through. That's not showing up in the 15. I think if we were to choose between a 14 and a 15, the way my palate is aligned and the fact that apparently I bought the 15 for cheaper than the 14, I think I would prefer buying a 15 before I bought a 14, but I think I would buy either of them again. I think they're both solid bottles. They're expensive though. I mean, that's the thing. That is the thing. I'm not in a hurry to rush out and buy either one of them again. You're not gonna buy like multiples. Eh? No, no, it's not one like, whoa, I need this in my life, have a backup, but if I had some extra coin to spend, or if I found it on sale like you did, it would come into consideration on either of them. They're both solid. As far as which one I like better, that's one of those depending on the day things. For me, it's not something you need to have. It's not one that I would put on the list of like bourbons you need to try. But if you find it and you got the cash and you want to jump in on something that's a little more expensive, a little higher age, I think this is a decent one to buy. Either of them. Have you had Calumet 14 or 15? If so, let us know what you think about it. Which one is your favorite of the two? Please hit like and subscribe. That helps us out a bunch, you guys. From the Western Wisconsin Whiskey Emporium for ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next Wednesday.